Welcome to a special season of five-minute biographies on the first 10 British Prime Ministers, while we wait for season 17 of the regular show to commence. Today, we bring you episode three, Henry Pelham. Henry Pelham, a significant figure in British politics during the 18th century, served as Prime Minister and was instrumental in shaping the government during considerable change. Born on the 25th of September 1694 at Lawton, Sussex, Pelham was the second son of Thomas Pelham, 1st Baron Pelham, and his wife Grace Pelham, nay Hull. The Pelham family was well established in the English aristocracy, giving Henry an advantageous start in life. Pelham received an education befitting his status, first attending Westminster School and later enrolling at Hart Hall, Oxford, now Hartford College. His education was complemented by a grand tour of Europe, a traditional journey through the continent undertaken by young men of his class to complete their education and prepare for public life. These experiences gave Pelham a broad understanding of European politics and culture, which would later inform his political career. Entering the political arena, Pelham was elected as Member of Parliament for Seaford in 1717, a position he held until 1722, when he became MP for Sussex. His early political career was marked by his alignment with the Whig Party, which dominated British politics during this period. Pelham's political fortunes were closely tied to his brother, Thomas Pelham Hulls, 1st Duke of Newcastle, an influential political figure who served in various high offices. Pelham's rise within the government was steady. In 1724, he was appointed Lord of the Treasury, and in 1725 he became Secretary at War. This post involved significant responsibilities during a time when Britain was frequently engaged in military conflicts. His competent handling of military finances and administration earned him a reputation as a capable and trustworthy statesman. By 1730, Pelham had ascended to the position of Paymaster of the Forces, one of the most lucrative and influential posts in the government. His tenure in this role was marked by his commitment to financial prudence and efficiency as he worked to manage the nation's military expenditures during the War of the Austrian Succession. Pelham's abilities did not go unnoticed, and he continued to rise in prominence within the Whig Party. In 1743, following the death of Spencer Compton, 1st Earl of Wilmington, Henry Pelham was appointed First Lord of the Treasury, effectively becoming Prime Minister. Pelham's leadership style was characterised by his calm demeanour, practical approach to governance and emphasis on consensus building. Unlike some of his predecessors, Pelham preferred to avoid confrontation and worked to maintain harmony within his cabinet and parliament. One of Pelham's most notable achievements as Prime Minister was his role in the establishment of the Consolidation Act of 1749, which simplified and restructured the national debt. This act was a significant step towards stabilising Britain's finances and ensuring long-term economic stability. Pelham's financial policies were guided by his belief in the importance of fiscal responsibility and prudent management of public funds. Pelham also played a crucial role in foreign policy. His tenure saw the end of the War of the Austrian Succession in 1748, and he was instrumental in negotiating the Treaty of Aix-la-Chapelle, which concluded the conflict. Pelham's approach to foreign policy was characterised by a desire for peace and stability, and he sought to avoid unnecessary military engagements that could strain the nation's finances. Domestically, Pelham's government pursued policies aimed at social and economic reform. He supported the Gin Act of 1751, which sought to curb excessive drinking and improve public health by regulating the sale of gin. Pelham's administration also worked to reform the system of poor relief, although these efforts met with limited success. Despite his many achievements, including the Marriage Act of 1753, which set the minimum age for marriage without parental consent to 21, Pelham's tenure was challenging. He faced opposition from within his own party and rival factions, and political infighting occasionally undermined his leadership. Nevertheless, Pelham's ability to navigate these challenges with a steady hand earned him respect and loyalty 
from many of his contemporaries. Henry Pelham's time as Prime Minister ended with his sudden death on 6th March 1754 at Arlington Street, London. His death was a significant loss to British politics as he had been a stabilising force during a turbulent period. Pelham was succeeded by his brother, the Duke of Newcastle, who struggled to maintain the same cohesion and stability Henry achieved. Pelham's legacy is one of moderation, fiscal prudence and a commitment to peace and stability. His tenure as Prime Minister helped to lay the foundations for a more stable and financially secure Britain. While not as flamboyant or revolutionary as some of his predecessors or successors, Pelham's contributions to British governance were nonetheless profound and enduring. Henry Pelham's life and career are a testament to the value of steady, pragmatic leadership. His ability to manage complex political and financial challenges calmly set a standard for future leaders. Pelham's dedication to public service and his efforts to promote fiscal responsibility and social reform remain significant aspects of his legacy in British history. Thanks for listening to 5-Minute Biographies. Please check out our other biographies at 5minutebiographies.com and on YouTube at 5minutebiographies.com forward slash YouTube.